Welcome, Ben Runner. Anyone who knows me knows that I really love arcade games. I grew up with them from a really young age, staring at those glowing screens and struggling to reach the controls. In fact, many of my happiest memories of being on holiday as a kid revolve around playing arcade games at places like Butlins and Pontins. Not to mention when the fun fair came to visit my hometown and they were all at such easy reach. In my teenage years, I would visit the arcade on the side of my local cinema to check out the latest games and compete for high scores with my friends. As these arcades were always around me, coin-up conversions became the first games I seeked out when I got a home system of my own, so I could replay them to my heart's content. In this series so far, I've covered games from 1979 up to 1992, very much the prime years of the video game arcade. But as I turned 44 last week, it got me thinking about what coin-ups were out there in the year of my birth, and another quest for knowledge commenced. In 1977, arcade games were still very much a new thing, Pong was still fresh in the mind, and the very first home systems had begun to arrive like the Atari 2600 and Fairchild Channel F. But despite these ongoing innovations in the video game sector, most arcade games still didn't have colour graphics or microprocessors, and were a new and very expensive thing, and high scores were only just starting to emerge over the previously established timed games. Despite their primitive state, you'd be surprised just how fun many of them were, as this list very much proves. In 1976, Gremlin released Blockade, which would be the very first iteration of what we now know as the light cycle genre of Tron fame, which was also adapted into the Snake concept too. Many of the arcade companies of the time had their own go at remaking that game, and Domino's was Atari's. The idea is just the same, build as long a line as possible without colliding with the one of your opponent. But in this one, the line is built with Domino's, and should you collide, you get to watch them all fall down, which is a really nice touch. It might not be very original, but it's an interesting arcade oddity nonetheless. Driving games had already become a staple of the video game arcade by the time 1977 came around, and the innovations to the genre just kept on coming. Midway's Laguna Racer was a real standout from this year, with a number of advanced features including its pseudo 3D perspective and realistic gear shift controls. All you had to do here was drive up the road and avoid hitting cars. Each game is timed, but if you cover enough miles you get an extension. The faster you drive, the less time you have to react to oncoming traffic, and this gets heavier as the game progresses too. Space War is widely regarded as being the first ever proper video game and was played on giant PDP-1 mainframe computers in the Universities of America as early as 1962. The basic gameplay of Space Wars involves two armed spaceships attempting to shoot one another whilst manoeuvring within the gravity of a star. Each player controls one of the ships and must attempt to simultaneously shoot at the other ship and avoid colliding with said star. There is also a hyperspace feature that can be used as the last stitch means to evade enemy missiles. This is the granddaddy of all Vector Arcade games. It's very clear from this list that 1977 was a pretty big year for Atari, with a large number of their games featuring in this video, with many more that didn't quite make the cut too. Although it's probably the least well known of them all, Triple Hunt is perhaps the most groundbreaking. That's because this shooter game actually featured three very different variations that could be changed around by the flick of a switch, essentially providing the arcade operator with a new game. The cabinet also came with three different screen backdrops that could be swapped around too, adding even more appeal. Before there were Space Invaders, Taito unleashed another popular shooter up onto arcade audiences in the form of Guided Missile. The name kind of explains it all here. You launch missiles from your silo and guide them into the targets by holding left or right. Each game is timed at 90 seconds, but it's possible to extend this if you were good enough. There are six targets you can hit, trucks, helicopters, tanks, boats, planes and submarines, with each one gaining you a different amount of points. 
Guided Missile represents one of the very first titles that could be enjoyed equally by one or two players. Also known as Safari Hunt, this fairly simple target shooter also has some interesting trivia attached to it that some might have worked out already. You see, the game was later reimagined for the Sega Master System and its popular light phaser. This original version is a lot less advanced, but the idea is pretty much the same. Simply shoot as many wild animals as you can before the time runs out. But instead of using a light gun, you have to move the large safari hunter around the screen, blasting the creatures, with more points being awarded for faster moving animals like lions, birds and rhinos. Like several of the other Atari games on this list, I actually discovered Pool Shark thanks to it being included on one of the Atari flashback collections for the Xbox One. It's probably the earliest attempt to recreate the popular pub sport in pixel form and gets round its lack of colour by placing number values in all of the balls instead. Like so many coin-ops of this time, each game is timed with you simply trying to score as many points as possible within that limit. Once you clear the table, it's regenerated immediately so you don't have to wait very long to get potting again. Earlier on in this list I talked about the arcade adaptation of the seminal Space War and briefly mentioned its huge impact on video gaming in general. The one-on-one -on -one combat element was adapted into many different video games and became a staple for many years to come. With Star Cruiser we have one such example which actually arrived the same year as the Cinematronics classic but switches around several features. Instead of vector graphics we have rasters, the gravity element has been completely removed and one of the ships appears to be the Starship Enterprise. There were actually quite a few different 10 pin bowling games appearing around this time, with other offerings from the likes of Midway and Atari most prominently. But with Robot Bowl, Exidy tried to make it sound a little bit more exciting. I mean, who wants to play as a boring old human bowler, right? The name means very little in all honesty, as this is a pretty bog standard top down bowling game, but it does feature some clever controls that allow you to manipulate the ball, and features modes for either one or two players, which does help it rise above most of its competition. At the start of this video we looked at Domino's, Atari's own take on the hugely influential arcade game Blockade. And now it's time to have a look at Midway's attempt. Again the core gameplay is exactly the same, simply draw a line for as long as possible without hitting the one left by your opponent. But rather than just playing against one competitor, Checkmate is a four player game, making it much more chaotic. It's also notable for featuring simple music that is reactive to the game, meaning it becomes faster and more fear inducing the closer you come to your death. Canyon Bomber is a simple but incredibly fun coin op from Atari that inspired hundreds of different clones on home systems. The game sees either zeppelins or biplanes flying over a canyon full of numbered rocks. From your aircraft you can drop bombs to destroy these rocks and you're rewarded a score based on the numbers that appear on those boulders. The object of the game is to get a higher score than your opponent. The skill comes in the timing of your bombs to maximise the score. Miss a drop completely and you'll lose one of your three lives. Atari also released this game for their home systems too. One genre that seemed to rise to popularity this year was the target shooter, and with Midway's Desert Gun we probably have the best example. The original cabinet had a huge replica of a shotgun attached to it, and this transfers into the game as you have six shells that can be dispatched per round. Running across the screen are various animals that move faster and faster as the levels go on. Along the bottom part of the screen are stationary targets that can be hit for less points. Although the game has levels and score, it's also timed, so quick shooting is the key to success here. Drag Race is probably one of the more obscure titles on this list, but will probably be much more familiar to many when I reveal the next part of the story. 
Rather strangely, Atari never chose to convert this coin up to its own 2600 VCS console, and instead left Activision to release its own knockoff of the game called Dragster. This turned out to be a very bad move indeed, as Dragster would become one of the company's first big hits. The object of the game was simple, to cross the finish line in the fastest time possible without blowing your engine. Drag Race is certainly short, but incredibly sweet. Sega Gremlin's Depth Charge appeared under a multitude of different names and variations over the years. The best known of these would probably be the later colour version Deep Scan, which appeared as a hidden game on the Sega Saturn release of Die Hard Arcade. In the game you control a ship above the waves, moving left to right dropping bombs on the submarines below. The ones nearer the surface are slower and carry less points, the ones at the bottom are faster and reward you with a higher score. The idea is to try and achieve the highest score possible within the time limit. This title from Exidy was clearly inspired by Atari's hugely successful breakout, but made enough changes to make it more than just another clone, and a bona fide classic in its own right. In Circus you need to bounce the clowns off the seesaw at the bottom to make them jump into the air. The trick to this game is that there are two clowns, so it's a constant balancing act with one clown providing propulsion for the other. You always need to land the airborne clown on the empty side of the seesaw to make his partner jump, and if you miss, you lose a life. It's tricky at first, but soon becomes very addictive. Atari's Superbug was a huge evolution of the already well established top down driving game genre. This is because for the very first time in a game like this, the screen scrolled, meaning you had to learn the course to gain the best scores. In the game, you drove an iconic VW Beetle around a track avoiding hazards such as parked cars, oil slicks, and sand. The idea was to complete as much of this course as you could before the time ran out, at which point you would not only be awarded with a final score, but also an appraisal of your driving ability, another first in video games. Many of the space shooters of this era were directly inspired by either Star Trek or Star Wars, which first hit cinemas this very same year but Atari Starship manages to combine elements from both of them. As you launch into space with a cockpit view of your TIE fighter-like vessel front and centre, a squadron of enemy craft start to come into view that bear an almost uncanny resemblance to the one and only Starship Enterprise. Simply shoot them down to gain points, whilst avoiding the incoming asteroids. You also have a limited amount of photon torpedoes that act like a smart bomb too. A couple of years previous, Exidy had unleashed Death Race onto arcade audiences, causing a great deal of controversy in the process. The game ended up being rejigged, rebranded and re-released several times because of that, before eventually evolving into Car Polo, one of the very first colour arcade games. This is a game for up to four players where the red and blue teams use their cars to try and push a ball into the goal. The team with the most goals when the time runs out wins the game. Now doesn't this concept seem rather familiar? A game of Rocket League anyone? Midway's Boot Hill was the sequel to the revolutionary 1975 coin-up Gunfight, which was the first game to feature human combat and also the first to have a microprocessor. This follow-up was pretty much more of the same, only a bit slicker, and was an equally huge success for the company. The main difference between this game and Gunfight was that you could now play against the computer, as opposed to the two player only action of the original, and also hide behind scenery. This game inspired many clones, most notably Atari's Outlaw, which gained popularity on their own 2600 VCS console. Following up from Sprint 2 and Sprint 4 was Atari's Sprint 8 titled this way like the prequels because of how many players it could support. The original Sprint game was actually an evolution of another Atari arcade game in Grand Track 10, which was the very first top-down racer, a genre that has become hugely popular over the years. 
The biggest differences between Sprint 8 and the games that came before it was not just the number of players though, it also had the addition of a microprocessor, and also colour graphics for the very first time too. It's easy to see why this one became so popular. And that rounds up my look at the greatest arcade games of 1977. Are there any others you can think of that should have made the list? Or do you disagree with any of the entries that I did include? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olsen, Dos Gamerman, Tiago Piera Dos Santos Silva and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now, where you can get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.